let's look at a couple more examples of groups. The first one I want to take a look at involves matrices. Specifically, I want to look at 2x2 two two matrices. Now, to understand this, we need to remember how matrix multiplication works. So I'm just going to go through a simple little matrix multiplication example. Let's say I've got the matrix 1, 3, 2, negative 1 times the matrix 4, negative 1, negative 2, 5. When we multiply it out, we go across the first matrix, down the second one, pairing things up, and then adding the pairs. So 1 times 4 is 4, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, 4 minus 6 is a negative 2. For the top right, I take the top of the first matrix, the right part of the second matrix, same thing, left to right, top to bottom, pair them up and then add. Negative 1, plus 15 gives me a 14. Bottom left, I take the bottom and the left. 8 plus 2 gives me a 10. Bottom right, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Hopefully you remember that how that works. Now I'm going to be doing some stuff with these matrices, but specifically I want to look at the set of matrices two by two real valued but put on the restriction that the determinant is not zero. So remembering what the determinant is, let's go ahead and take one of these matrices again. If I had 1, 3, 2, negative 1, the determinant of that matrix, we multiply down minus multiply up. So I would have negative 1 minus 6, the determinant of that matrix would be negative 7. The most important thing about that determinant is that if the determinant is 0, the matrix is not invertible. So, we're going to call this set, which I described here before, the set of 2 by 2 real valued matrices whose determinant is not 0, we're going to call that set GL2R. Where the GL comes from we don't need to worry about the 2 has to do with the size of the matrix. The R has to do with the fact that we've got real valued entries. So to show that this thing GL2R is a group, we need to check those three properties of a group. Is it associative? Well, what we could do is to kind of check that if I had a generic thing A, B, C, D times an E, F, G, H and then take that times an I, J, K, L see if I get the same thing as if I do the A, B, C, D times the product of the E, F, G, H, and the I, J, K, L. And if we were to go through here, that shows it, in fact, not just for the ones whose determinant is not zero, that would show it for all matrices. It might be worth your going through and trying to figure that thing out and see that those two things, it doesn't matter what order you do the multiplication, 
but this is also a known property. We know that matrix multiplication is associative, so I'm not going to go through all the steps to try and show that, that th those things are the same. The next thing we need to know, to show that this is a group, we need an identity. And in this case, the identity matrix, 1, 0, 0, Because if I took 1, 0, 0, 1 times any matrix A, B, C, D, when I go across down, I get A plus 0 gives me an A, B plus 0 gives me a B, 0 plus C gives me a C, B plus D, or 0 plus D gives me a D. And there we go. And we should verify it that it works the other way too, but again, it will. Finally, we need inverses. When we're doing inverses, what we need to do is then show that everything, that every real valued matrix whose determinant is not zero has an inverse. But I already said that. The important property of the determinant is not zero is that that guarantees that the matrix does have an inverse. So because that set of elements is associative, it has an identity, and every element has an inverse, that means that that set is in fact, with that operation, is in fact a group.